Hello, it's Thursday. So it's finally happened. You know that thing where if you're on YouTube for long enough, eventually you start making fidget toy content? Well, this week it finally came for me, but it's not all bad news because we're going to do it our way. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of those articulated slugs. And honestly, they're surprisingly easy. Who well, I've been thinking of is like a boogie slug just because he dances really well. <laughs> like he does the worm. And he twerks. So yeah. Also, keep your eyes out this week for the bonus video that's going to show you how to make your own poppet square. It's not quite big enough to be a weekly video, but at the same time, it's so satisfying. I couldn't not share it with you guys. <laughs> right, let's get into it. So I've taken a couple of different approaches to my slugs this week. So first up, we have our main default slug. He's made in just one color using DK or 8 ply and a 3.5 millimeter hook. So he turns out on the larger side, but I've also made this one here with four ply yarn and a two millimeter hook. And he is a little bit more of a pocket slug, still has that great articulation. This particular yarn changed colors on its own. So this pattern is a great candidate for any of those variegated yarns that you haven't quite managed to work into an actual project yet. And that's what I'll be doing today too. But I've also made this one here using like seven different colors for a little bit of a rainbow reveal slug. So you can have some real fun with this if you are so inclined. So for today's slug, you're going to need your chosen yarn and a hook that is suitable for use with that yarn. Though I do recommend going a size down from whatever it recommends on the label. So for example, today I'm going to be using this eight ply slash DK 100% acrylic. It's variegated, so we should get some nice, interesting patterns developing all on their own. It normally recommends a four millimeter hook, but I highly recommend always using a 3.5 millimeter hook for this kind of yarn. You're also going to need some stuffing, a pair of scissors, and I suggest having a darning needle available to you. A regular needle could also work, or you can even use your hook for the final step. There isn't any real sewing involved with this project. A written version of today's pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will also be made available on my Etsy and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anyone who's interested. So before we start our main slug, we actually just need to make his eyeball stalks. And I warn you that these are the fiddliest part of the project. So we start with a magic ring of six. We're then going to work six single crochet around. Then two repeats of a single crochet and a decrease. There's one. And two. So that leaves you with just four stitches in your round and we are going to work three rows of four single crochet each for a grand total of 12 stitches. And finish off. you are going to want to tuck any of these spare tails down inside the eye. So there is our first little eye stalk and you are going to want to make two of those. I'm uh, not super excited about how the color pooling is working up, but hopefully on a larger piece, it looks a little bit nicer. <laughs> so we'll pop those to one side. And now our slug is worked entirely in one piece, starting from the tip of the nose. And then we basically just work back one section at a time. Now for today's slug, I'm going to walk you through the head and one of the body segments really carefully, just to make sure that you're familiar with all the techniques that you need. And then we'll just have the rest of the pattern up on the screen that you can just follow along with. And we'll then walk through the final tail segment together. So grabbing our yarn again, start with a magic ring of six.
We're then going to work six increases around to bring our row total up to 12. Like so. So in the next row we're going to be creating his little chin whiskers. So we start by working six single crochet around. Then in the next stitch we're going to put a three double crochet cluster. So how you do that is you yarn over your hook, insert it into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through the first two loops on your hook. So that should leave you with two loops on your hook and then we're going to do it again. So yarn over your hook, insert into the same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through the first two loops on your hook. So you should be up to three loops now. And then just one more time, yarn over your hook, insert into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops of your hook. So. At this point, you should have the start of three double crochet into the same stitch and four loops on your hook in total. You should then yarn over and pull through all four loops and tighten the stitch down. So that should form this little bobble or cluster and that is his little like chin whiskery thing. We're then going to work three single crochet across what will become the bottom of his head And then we're going to do a second three double crochet cluster in the next stitch. Like so. We then have just one single crochet to finish the round. So there are his little like mouth proboscises. There's probably a name for those. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you know it. And it brings us to round four where we're going to attach his eye stalks. So we start round four attaching one of the eye stalks so we get straight into things. So this is a note from the future. Uh, on screen you're seeing the result at the end of row five. I just wanted to say if you find the next set of instructions on attaching these eye stalks too difficult, you can just keep those eye stalks separately and sew them on at the end. Okay, there is no need for this pattern to create unnecessary stress in your life. So if you don't like joining things in the round or you find it too hard or you're not, there's not enough room on this piece for you to do it comfortably, just sew them on. So what I want you to do is look at the base of your eye stalk. Just either one will do and rotation doesn't matter because they are the same the whole way around and both of them are identical. And you should be able to identify four stitches. So I've got four stitches there and then my finishing off point. To attach this little eye stalk, what I want you to do is insert your hook from the inside of your eye to the outside of your eye through one of those sets of loops. And then I want you to insert your hook through the next available stitch on the head. So that's what we've got there. My hook is through one stitch of the eye and one stitch of the head. And I'm going to work a single crochet through those two stitches. So that's one. I'm then going to insert my hook again from the inside of the eye stalk to the outside of the eye stalk through the next available stitch around. And then once again, insert my hook through the next available stitch of the head as well. Then yarn over, pull up a loop through both of those stitches and finish the single crochet. So what that's done is attach this eye stalk through two of its four stitches to the head. And we have two stitches remaining on the stalk that we're going to attach in the next round. So there is our first eye. I'm going to work one single crochet through just the head. Then we're going to grab our second eye and we're going to do the same thing again. So again, it doesn't matter which of the four stitches you choose to start with. So I'm going to insert my hook through from the inside of the eye to the outside of the eye, one of the stitches. Then the next stitch of the head, work a single crochet. And then one more time, next available stitch of the eye stalk and then the next available stitch of the head as well. So the open side of the eye should be facing the same direction as the open side of the head. If it's not, you've attached them up the wrong way, go, go back and do it again. <laughs> 
So now we need to finish off this row. And to do that, we are just going to work seven single crochet around back to our starting place. So Sluggy's head is coming together quite nicely. So in round five, we're going to finish attaching these eye stalks. So we're gonna start by making sure that we can clearly identify the two remaining stitches on this first eye stalk. I'm going to insert my hook from the outside of the eye stalk to the inside of the eye stalk through the first available set of loops. And then through the next stitch available on the head as well. then work my single crochet. And that's immediately pulling that eye upright into a better position. So there is our first stitch. Now this next one, we're still going to insert our hook through the next stitch of the eye stalk and the next stitch of the head, but we're going to be working an increase instead of a single crochet. So that just means we are putting two single crochet through both of those stitches, like so. So that is now that eye stalk fully attached. You can see that it's already being pulled up into a more upright and perky position. So we're now just going to work one single crochet in between them, just like we did last row. And now we're going to attach the second eye stalk. So once again, identifying the two stitches remaining on the eye stalk, inserting our hook into the first available stitch, and then also into the next available stitch of the head. So we've got two stitches on our hook. And we are going to work an increase through those two stitches. So that's just two single crochet into that little opening. And then with our last remaining stitch of the eye and the next remaining stitch of the head, we are going to work a single crochet. So there is our second eye stalk attached. So now we just need to finish our round and we do that by working a single crochet and then an increase. And then three single crochet. and another increase, and a final single crochet to finish the row. So there we are at the end of row five. So from here, I personally think things get a lot easier. So we're going to work 16 single crochet around. Then we're going to work two single crochet and an increase. You're then going to work three repeats of three single crochet and then an increase. So there is our first one and you're going to do two more of those. And then just a final single crochet to finish the round, bringing you up to 20 stitches. We're then going to work 20 single crochet around. Which brings us to the back of our head segment. So the next row we're going to do is going to provide the edge at the back of that segment. And it is 20 back post single crochet around. So Post stitching is when we work around the post of the stitch instead of through the loops. And because this is back post stitching, I'm going to insert my hook around the post from the back of the piece or the inside in this case, around that post and back to the back of the piece. I then yarn over and pull up a loop around the post and then yarn over and complete the stitch. So there is our first one and we're going to work 20 of those around. So there we go. So now what we're going to be doing is closing off this opening to get to the narrowest point in our slug. So this will bring us down to 14 stitches and then we're going to stuff. Now I do recommend for this pattern that you count at the end of every single row to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches because even one stitch off is going to throw your slug a little bit wonky. So we start with two single crochet 
and then we're going to single crochet three together which I just do by inserting my hook through the front loops of the next three stitches yarning over and pulling up a loop through all three and then yarning over and finishing the stitch so there is our single crochet three together we are then going to work two single crochet a single crochet three together two single crochet A decrease, four single crochet along the bottom of the slug, and a final decrease to finish the row. So there we are at the end of row 10 and I want you to grab some stuffing and we're going to very lightly stuff the head. Please keep in mind that all of these pieces will be lightly stuffed and it's purely to help them hold their shape. You will need them to be able to squeeze together and they won't be able to do that as nicely if you've overstuffed them. So less is more. We are then going to work row 11, which is a single crochet three together, a decrease, and then single crochet three together. Then you have three decreases to finish off that round. So that should get us down to six stitches left. So there's our opening and you should be able to check if you've overstuffed because this whole face at the back shouldn't bulge outwards. You'll see mine's got a little bit of a squish to it, but in general it's sitting relatively flat and that's what you want. What do we think of the colors so far? I think they might be showing up nicer on camera than they are in person, but I'm not mad at it. I do like it on the yellow background. So that is the narrowest point of our slug, but we will return to this point for every single segment. So now we are actually starting our second segment, our first body segment. So we're going to start by working six front post single crochet around. So we've done back post, but front post is worked from the front of the work back to the front of the work. So just like that. So there are six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We are then going to put an increase into each of those, which should bring you up to 12 stitches. So it's kind of looking like the end of a balloon right now. So now rows 14 and 15 should be pretty familiar to you as we worked the, these exact two rows on the head before. So that is four repeats of a single crochet, an increase, and then a single crochet. So there is our first one and I'm going to do that three more times. Now I would like to just warn you that if you work in the spiral like I do, and in fact I don't know if this pattern would work any other way, we often have to counteract the spin of the piece because everything kind of slowly drifts off to one side. That is particularly prevalent in this pattern. I believe it's because we spend so much time going down to a very narrow point and then back up again. It just sort of exaggerates that spin. So there we are, we are back up to 16 stitches around. Then one more row to get us up to 20, which is four repeats of a single crochet an increase and then two single crochet. So there is our first one and we're going to do that three more times. So that should leave you with 20 stitches in your row and it should be the same size as the widest point on the head. So you should literally be able to like take this little flap and push it against the head and have it match up. So for row 16, we are working the rim around 
this body piece. So we're going to be working 20 back post single crochet around. So just like so. We're then going to work two rows of 20 single crochet around for a combined total of 40 stitches. So there we are at the back side of our first body segment. And we're going to work 20 back post single crochet around to give it its back edge. Like so, that should be a fairly familiar row to you by now. And then we're going to work four repeats of single crochet three together. And then two single crochet. So there is our first repeat and we're going to do it three more times. So there we are at the end of row 20 and we should be down to 12 stitches around and we are once again going to take some stuffing, not a lot, and just gently stuff that section. And once again, we're just going to give it a test to make sure that these two sections can still squish together. No problems. Some of my stuffing is trying to escape when I do that, so I'm going to pluck it out. If it doesn't want that stuffing in there, then neither do I. So now we just work our final row of this segment to narrow down to six stitches. So there we are at the end of the first body segment. So now you're familiar with all of the types of techniques and rows you'll see in this pattern. You should go ahead and work rows 22 to 31 for the second body segment. Then rows 32 to 41 for the third body segment. Rows 42 to 49 for the fourth body segment. And then rows 50 to 55 for the fifth body segment. So there we are at the end of row 55. And I do just want to point out that your slug should be quite long at this point. When you line him up with a finished slug, You'll note that we contract him in on himself to shrink him down a bit. So if yours is looking way longer than you expected, that's normal. I'm not making the obvious joke. So now we have just three rows to go to finish off the little pointy tail segment. So I thought it'd be nice to just come back and do them with you. So for row 56, we have six front post single crochet. Like so. Then we have six single crochet around. So in our final row, we are going to work three decreases. One. Two. three and then you're going to finish off and leave a tail that's at least one full length of your slug that will be too much yarn but we like to be on the safe side so you might still have a little opening at the tip of your tail so I want you to pull this strand of yarn through the front loops only of each of those three stitches
and pull to close. I'm then going to thread this strand onto a needle and we're going to do the magic trick that contracts this all in on itself and gives it that good wiggly texture. So I'm going to thread this down from the tip of the tail and the goal is we're going to try and thread it the whole length through the middle. So through those little joining parts, but you can do them just one section at a time. So there's the tail section then insert back through the same hole. Now that is why I recommend a darning needle, not a sharp needle, because a sharp needle can accidentally make stitches really easily. The darning needle is less likely to do that to you. You can give it a little pull along the way and you'll see it immediately sort of contracts in on itself. It's that good sluggy texture going. Okay, so we're currently at the back of the neck. I always end up pulling mine to the top of the slug. That's just because it feels right to me. I don't think that's really going to make a big difference. And then we're going to pull that strand in a way that pulls your slug in nice and tight. Now you can pull yours as tight or as loose as you like. I'm going for about, I don't really know how to express it, but I've pulled mine in this far. So you'll note that all of the pieces are touching each other. And then at the back of the head, so not going into the face or anything like that, we've got, I'm going to work as many stitches as I need to, to lock that in place. And then just tuck whatever's remaining away inside the head. And then give it a test wiggle. So that was so weird. I didn't think I liked this colour yarn until I did that final step and now I think it works great. <laughs> So there is our finished articulated slug. I kind of want to attach it to two sticks and turn it into like a Muppet style puppet. It's because it's got so much attitude and its poses have such character to them. But there is our finished slug. I hope you had fun making them with me today. I understand it's a little bit different than the patterns I normally do, but once I made one, I couldn't resist their adorable little slug bunny aesthetic, you know? And they were just so easy. So yeah, keep your eye out for the pop-up video. It should be out within a day or two, but otherwise I will see you next week. Okay, bye.